Dominic here with some more AFK Arena. Today we wanted to take a look at the healing and the CC classes. So a couple that are kind of vi vital to the progression in AFK Arena. And of course I want to throw out the disclaimer. There, there's a lot of different ways. There's a couple different heroes um, that kind of fit different roles. So depending on who you're ascending, who you get up to Mythic, who you get up to Ascended signature items, there's a lot of factors when it comes to tier lists or when it comes to kind of ranking um, heroes just because it does vary with some RNG on where you are. So the first hero we want to look at is the Light Bearers, which is Rowan. Rowan is probably one of the best heroes that they've added to the game in the recent patches um, because he brings a heal and he brings energy regen to the team not only with his abilities, but also with his signature item. So big skill is Dazzle. Allies recover 70% of energy. If the coins are caught by the enemy team, they actually stun them. So not only does he have CC, he has an energy recovery, which is absolutely phenomenal. Combine that with his healthy supplies ability. Um, when the allies hit points drop below 50%, they will receive 40% of their max health back. And once all the potions, so once all three potions have been used, he'll actually call his little birdie. The bird brings in a little sack full of um, potions. So he gets more potions at that point, which is very, very nice anytime he uses the ability. And with avian assault or avian assault, um, duck attacks multiple enemies, stealing their energy. So not only does he have energy regen, he has the ability to stun enemies, he has healing potions, he has the ability to steal energy points with this one. Um, he does mitigate ga damage. So when he takes excess damage of 10%, he loses energy instead of health. So you'll actually see when he gets attacked, he has an immunity. And then his signature item, after starting the battle, Rowan sets up the stall, which he always does at the beginning. He has an, the allies drink an energy potion when they hit 600 points. So again, he is so vital in so many ways because not only can he heal them as he brings back energy potions when the stall's empty, he refills it, including the energy potion. So super overpowered hero. If you're not using him, he is my recommended number one. Ever since I got him, I pushed through like four chapters with him and I've been working on getting his signature item up. Next one that's really kind of situational but vital is Rosline. Rosline is a huge, huge, huge um, energy user, which energy is really vital in this game, but she does have a couple of other pretty nice abilities. Uh, the motivation ability, she actually takes all of her, she follows the hero with the um, highest combat rating. So it is not attack rating, it is not defense, it is combat rating. So how her, hers right in the middle says 729, that is your combat rating. Uh, the damage she receives is reduced by 40%. When she uses her ability, she will restore the, the, when her energy is full and the ultimate goes off, she will increase or fill up the energy bar of essentially who she's following, which is very, very strong. Uh, raises the attack rating of the ally being followed by 40% for four seconds with her ultimate and level three does 60% for four seconds. So very, very strong because she can make a hero that uses an alt use it twice because she fills up their energy bar, essentially. Combine that with her teacup ability, which is pretty cool. Heals the ally she's following for 150% worth of her attack rating. Um, level two, the effect of the ability are increased by 25%. And then level three, health recovery is increased by 170%. So not only is she bringing energy back to a hero, is she's bringing health back to a hero if they're low as well. And then, not exactly sure, the crazy something up there, but when she throws her teacups, she actually does a um, stun, which again, she has a CC aspect, she has a healing aspect. Her healing aspect is only one hero that she's following particularly. So she just makes them super powerful for whoever she's following. Rosalind takes out two key teacups and hurls them at an enemy, inflicting 120% damage, leaving them temporarily stunned. And she will prioritize her attack that, that against the enemy that the attacking ally is following. So if I have Belinda and Belinda is attacking, you know, an enemy Lucius in the front line, her ability will be going to the Lucius in the front line to, um, to go ahead and stun him. And she does a ton of damage 
which is very, very solid as well. The second hero, or the, the next hero, is Namora. Namora and Rowan are kind of the only, well, Namora, Rowan, and I would say Namisu are kind of the only real heroes that have healing. Her ultimate calls upon the forces of he nature to heal all of her teammates' health by 30% of her own maximum health. So making sure to get her health up will make her heal stronger. Allies with lower than 20% regenerate health 30% faster. Increases the defense rating of allies by 15%. So not only is she healing them, is she's buffing their defense, which is super powerful. Mother Nature, no more increases the ability is able to increase the healing efficiency of herself and all teammates by 15%. So that's what makes her so tough when she's partnered with running her and Rowan or running her and Tassie. That the, the her and Tassie combination has always been super strong because Tassie does have a heal ability tied to her as well. 50% of the overflowing health that exceeds a hero's maximum health is converted into a shield and health regeneration increased by 20%. So again, straight healer, but to kick that up a notch, she does have the Beguile ability, which uh, Namora deals 90% damage to a random target that is standing within her attack range, causing them to be entranced for six seconds. While in an entranced state, the affected enemies will use normal attacks. Uh, level three, entranced enemies now use all abilities, excluding their ultimate. Entranced enemies attack rating increased by 30% while entranced. So if you're entrancing the enemy team and it's one of their major DPS or one of their one of their strongest heroes, I've seen them just turn around and literally destroy another hero. And then the final ability, Life Force, Nomura gradually heals the weakest team ever, weakest member of her team for 30% of her own maximum health, gradually restores a total of 150 energy points to the ally, and total amount of health restored increased to 40% of maximum health. So three abilities that are right tied to healing. The last one is CC with life force gradually regener regenerating energy. So again, Namora is super strong when it comes to the healing and support role because she has the healing, she has the CC, which just makes it very, very vital to have her. And also with her signature item, almost forgot, Namora's attacks heal Namora's weakest ally for 60% of her own attack rating. The only problem with her signature item and what really kind of downgrades it is her attack rating is very, very low. Her hit points, because her ultimate is based on hit points, is very, very high, but overall her attack rating is very low. Even when you look at the 10, 20, and 30, um, they have it all based on attack rating, which I wish either they'd bump the attack rating or they would base it on something else because her attack rating and her damage is almost nothing which meaning that the health recovery is not as strong as it could be. But the next one is Tassie. And Tassie is really the, the superstar when it comes to CC, kind of like Manira. Um, she, her ultimate ability, which is Slumber, puts all enemy targets to sleep for four seconds. Once the enemy awakes, they will be dealt 25% damage. Duration level two is extended to five seconds. Level three, damage dealt after waking is increased to 30%. So literally, she stops the whole enemy team for five seconds. You can just sit there and do damage on them. Doesn't wake them up, anything like that. But they will just sit there and sleep. So double that with the banishment ability. Tassie's banished the most powerful enemy target for four seconds. So remember, the most powerful target. So when you're fighting a team of five, the most powerful enemy is banished, which level three is up to six seconds, and it steals 40% of the target's attack rating while they are banished. So not only is she getting a little bit stronger, is you're essentially taking a hero out of the battle for six full seconds, which is huge. If you've played this game for a while, you know, even a couple seconds makes a big difference. And this is an ability she'll use more than once during a normal battle. Dream Spirit, she summons a magical fairy, which lasts for 10 seconds. Fairy deals 55% damage to enemies and heals teammates for 55%. Um, level 3, the effects are increased to 13 seconds. And level 4, damage and healing values are raised to 65. So essentially, she deals a little bit of damage with the fairy that flies away, but it's really nice when she does do the healing. Doesn't do a lot of healing, but a little bit of healing just might be enough to 
keep her alive. And her last ability, which is the teleportation ability, she's able to teleport behind an enemy. If Tassie teleports next to an ally, they increase the haste, which the haste increases the energy regeneration because the hero attacks faster. If she goes behind an enemy, she deals them damage. Um, Cassie's time is reduced each time that she is struck because the ability does have a six second cooldown. So essentially she's a hero that just bounces all over the battlefield. Her RNG is pretty amazing. And then couple it with her signature item. And this is where it really gets interesting. And a lot of people that have focused on Tassie and got her a really high signature item reduces the attack rating of nearby enemies by 10% after she uses teleport. Remember, when she gets hit, it lowers the teleportation cooldown, so she'll be actually teleporting more. Uh, level 10, 20, and 30 does 15, 20, and 30%. So if she's teleporting into a group of enemies, not only is she doing damage, is she is nerfing their attack at plus 30 by 30%. So you're literally cutting off 30% of the enemy's attack right off the bat, which is super powerful. The Mauler team, when it comes to healing and support, they do have the Life Leech ability, which is a pretty strong ability, but overall it's not enough to sustain the team it, versus our burst teams. They get wiped out. Um, continuous damage teams, they can do pretty well because of a Life Leech ability. So the only one that they really have that does healing in CC is Nemisu, which I've started leveling him up on the Mauler account. He is very, very strong. He's pretty cool to play with. Um, Resonating Blast, which I wish they would go ahead and change up some of his ultimates because this one uh, creates an explosive shockwave that deals 200 damage to all enemies that it hits. If it, if it hits Namitsu's totems, they become active and deal their initial damage value. Um, I wish he had something just a little bit different. I'm not sure more of a heal, maybe more of a CC, just because that's what the Maulers lack. Um, rejuvenating Totem, he sets down a healing Totem. Problem with this one is the healing is pretty strong on it. Um, as you can see, equal to 80% of the total attack rating, Totem will remain active and heal nearby allies for 3% per second. And the Totems can be targeted and destroyed by enemies. That's the problem is when the healing totems go up, if there's not, if sometimes he'll put it on the enemy side, enemies just always kill the totems right away. If they actually go behind a hero, very, very effective. But again, it's a little bit of RNG with his totems that he's setting out there. Offensive totems, Nemesu sets down an offensive totem behind the enemy that deals 120% damage to its surrounding enemies. This one is actually pretty good because what it'll do is it'll pop up right behind an enemy and the enemy that it pops up behind will actually turn around and start attacking it. So not really a CC as we think of like a, a Tassie or as a Falks, but it is kind of a distraction. Um, Baden has a good distraction because of his little minions. Uh, Grezzled has a great distraction and Nemisu has a good distraction because of the totems. Um, his last one is increase the allies with the highest attacks rating haste for 40 seconds, level two by 50, and then three effects are increased to 12 seconds. So if he's buffing haste for 12 seconds, 50 more haste for 12 seconds, again, haste is really, really huge in this game because it helps with energy regen. So not only are, is your hero doing more damage because they're attacking faster, the haste is increasing their energy regen. His signature item, which I actually don't have unlocked, um, when he starts battle, he puts a offensive totem right in the middle. The plus 10, he puts a rejuvenating totem and an offensive totem. So he'll actually start the battle with two totems up before he starts anything else, which is a great distraction. You'll actually see the tanks when they start battle run right to the totems to kill the totems first. And you already have a healing totem behind both of your tanks. So very, very strong. Uh, plus 20, plus 30 does make the totem stronger so it actually gives the totems more health which is very very solid as far as the rest of the mauler team scrag does have a little bit of a stun when he uses his uh the little iron jaws come in um but overall for cc not too much and the same with the graveborn team we have nara nara's biggest skill is this impale ability which she is not 
really much of a tank. Some people do use her for tanking. I feel like she is really situational. When there are no enemy targets in her vicinity, she will proceed to grapple, use her grappling hook to impale an enemy and drag them to herself. She'll prioritize attacks towards enemies standing opposing her. So this is similar to Athalia and similar to Kelthar, which she'll actually pull a hero from the opposite side of her and start stunning them, start doing a lot of damage to them. Perfect, perfect hero when you're dealing with either high, high DPS on the other side, whether it's a Belinda, whether it's a Shamira, or if you're dealing with a lot of heroes that do CC. So later in the game or even mid game when you're dealing with an Arden, when you're dealing with heroes that are going to just CC your heroes like crazy, um, taking out a Nomura, she is ideal. I've used her through since she came out and that's why I've gotten her up to two stars. Because not only with that, if you look at her signature item, when Nara discovers an enemy injured enough to be slain by her ultimate ability, she will attempt to use Impale to bring them closer. So she'll actually just kill a hero. So she'll kill the first hero that she grapples over. Let's say the hero goes down, then she'll proceed to grapple another hero right to her. If an enemy is about to die that is injured, she'll attempt to grapple or to impale them too. So you'll actually see multiple heroes throughout the entire fight. She keeps pulling them too. Just the problem of keeping her alive, which is why with her signature item, they give her the Life Bleach ability. If she kills a hero, um, her ultimate does give her a shield too. So trying to mitigate the damage she does because when she pulls the hero right to her, they do a significant amount of damage. Big CC that is in the Graveborn team is Pharrell. His ultimate ability does a ton of damage and it gets spirits on the enemy, but his terrorize ability terrifies and sends two heroes for two seconds and summons an evil spirit which haunts them for 10 seconds. As you can see, level two terrifies three enemies. So every time he uses this, and he uses it quite regularly, you're stunning three heroes for two seconds. So the sun effect lasts for up to three seconds on level three. So you're stunning three heroes for three seconds on a regular basis, which is just super, super powerful. Especially when you couple it with a signature item, normal attacks will cause an evil spirit to haunt the enemy target if a critical strike appears or occurs. So if he does a crit, a little spirit will, um, will start attacking them, start taking away their energy. Attack ratings for all enemies are reduced by 1.5% and health recovery rates are reduced by 10%. For every evil sp for every spirit that is haunting an enemy on the battlefield, the ability may stack up to five times, which when you start unlocking his signature item, a majority of the time, three to five heroes have spirits on them at all times. So they are getting the energy nerf, which is very strong. He brings a solid energy nerf as well as Nara that we just looked at does a very, very solid energy nerf. So the other one that I wanted to look at is Mahira. When it comes to CC, she is the ultimate, ultimate CC because not only do all of her abilities are kind of catered into keeping her alive, but her control ability, her ultimate ability through the entire game because she does have a lot of tanking stats. Mahira entrances all enemy heroes which causes them to start attacking each other with a normal attack for four seconds level two the heroes will not recover energy which is super super strong and then level three duration is extended up to five seconds so essentially you're going to have a whole enemy team attacking themselves for five seconds every time she uses her ultimate ability now if you're combining that with rowan who's doing a regen and you're combining it with possibly a Rosaline, if you can get her to stick on her, on Mahira, they, she can actually cripple an entire team regardless of how strong they are because not only are they not recovering energy, is they're attacking each other, essentially. So your team is doing damage to them while they're doing damage to their own team. So when it comes to CC, she is by far probably the strongest hero that I've seen. So a couple other ones that do CC really solid, which is Falks. Falks has his ability, which is confine. 
Deals 50% damage to the enemy with the highest attack rating. Similar to the other heroes, kind of focus on the highest attack rating, just like Banishment. Locks them in a coffin for 9 seconds, so where Tassie's only getting 6 seconds with Banish. Uh, Falks, you're getting a 9 second confine ability. And he does a significant amount of damage. Uh, some of the other ones that do a little bit of CC that I do love is Eron. If you're not using Eron, he is super solid because his Elemental Surge ability does an Ice Tornado, which lasts 7 seconds. When you unlock his signature item to com combine with it, his ultimate ability has a chance to cause enemies to become frozen for 2 seconds. The chance of the enemies being frozen are raised if the enemy is already suffering attack speed reductions. So 2 seconds right there with the Elemental Surge ability. So anytime he uses ultimate, most of the enemies do become frozen because he has his own... Um, he has his own speed reduction. So he actually has an attack that does a speed reduction. His level 30 increases the frozen ability to four seconds. So when you're using him and he, he hits with a slow, it's, it's pretty good to see if you've checked out some of the Wilder videos. He'll actually draw everybody in, swipe them with a sword to hit the slow ability, drop his ultimate, freeze everybody, and just sit and destroy the team, which is pretty... Uh, it's pretty funny to see. So when you look at overall with the healing and support, Rowan and Rosaline for the Light Bears, definitely super solid. Rowan, like I said, I'd recommend number one, um, focusing on those two heroes, Rowan and Rosaline. Definitely the Wilder team, the Nomura Tassi combo. Both of them or one of them, they're very, very solid. If you're looking at the Maulers, Nemitsu is really the go-to there. And then, of course, with the Graveborn, Nara, a little bit situational. She's a lot of a burst DPS versus a tank, but Pharrell is a must. I know a lot of people go with Shamira. Uh, Shamira Endgame, even the five-star Shamira, completely drops off. I haven't even used her in a long time. Um, but making sure that you have Pharrell, because not only does he do the energy reject or energy nerf for the enemy team, is he does have the CC aspect and he does a ton of damage. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, who you're using for the support and CC roles on your teams. And as always, thank you.